This tutorial is the fourth and final part of a four-part series on building an order processing web service with Spark Systems EA and Talent Open Studio, the ESB version. You may recall from the previous parts that I built a web service which would result in writing a record to a customer order table. The customer order table would then generate a unique identifier fed back through the web service to the caller. I built that table using Enterprise Architect, which lets me drag and drop different table um, objects onto the screen and then manipulate them by adding, a, um, adding attributes and the like. In this case, I've got a database set to SQL Server 2008. So the attributes that I'm using, they've got the real data types that map to SQL Server. Additionally, I can specify things like AutoNum for an, an identity column. And then when I'm satisfied with my model, I can generate more than one table or I can generate just a single table script, which looks something like this. Um, these models can be pretty complex. They can involve referential integrity and, of course, many other tables, uh, as well as views and, and store procedures. In the case of the web services, um, I can create a class model. And you can, if you've created a class model in AA before, you'll see some familiar packages here. We're not going to use these, but we need to have a top-level diagram so that I can start working with WSDL. In this case, I take the WSDL namespace and drag it onto the canvas. I'll call this order, and my namespace will be um, beck1.com slash order. And it generates a, a few things for me. I'm going to start off by removing uh, a few items. Um, specifically, I'm not going to be supporting a HTTP in this example. So sometimes it's easier to work in Project Browser. And what I'll do is start to pull some of these items off. I'll also pull the corresponding binding uh, item off. And so you see it's uh, kind of flattened out over here. Um, next step, I will rename the WSDL document to order I'll rename the service and it's reflected in this uh, change over here this this port uh, I'm going to rename the bindings and it's using the document style here. I'll rename the binding operation And I'll also rename the port type. OK, so I have these uh, taken care of now. Uh, messages, I've got a naming convention to use. I'm going to and the MSG order request, as well as the MSG order response. I'm going to work with the types a little bit here. Um, for the types, you'll see that there's no items that are in these um, definitions, so there's no real data conveyed. Uh, that's got to be taken care of. And I'm going to call these types the order request type. And I'll call this one here the order response type. Now, one nice feature of Enterprise Architect from a workflow perspective is when we get a item like the uh, uh, customer order table here, I can just drag chunks of these onto the canvas. And I'll put the single item customer order uh, ID in here. Uh, now I do have to go in and edit the attributes in here. Um, they don't have the proper stereotype right now, which is XSD element. 
we want these to be elements rather than columns, database columns. And I also want to go back into my um, toolbox here and off the shelf or out of the box Talon um, Spark Systems is going to create an element for me called order request type but that isn't really having the word type in your your elements doesn't really um, adhere to the naming convention so I'll have an order request element that will be part of, um, of uh, order request type And I'm going to do the same here. So for this element, which I call order response, I will then have order response. So that's okay. Back to my overview, I'll make sure that my um, messages here are pulling in the correct item. Because this is a document style, I want to make sure that it's not using the type attribute in my WSDL. So what I'll do for this is go in and define um, something, a slight variation of order request. And I'm going to base it on the, uh, on the element, which is there. And same thing over here. type. I'm going to double check a few of the tagged values on here um, for some of the SOAP parts of the message. Here's a, you should always put a proper URL in this uh, item here, relative ones are, are uh, very much discouraged. And I need one more item, which is the address, to make sure that that's set. Uh, okay, that is... Uh, so to generate this, you go over, put on code engineering, um, let's see if I can do it from here. Web search, generate whistle. Got one small error. I would like to rename that file. Okay. And so the WSDL generated here, I've got um, an editor built into EA. This is something that, in, if you remember from the service part, I was able to go and import that in. It's going to dig into this XML schema, and it's going to pull in some, other, um, some of the other uh, items um, that can be used throughout the, throughout the job. So in retrospective, Creating these web services was pretty quick, even for a contract first web service. What's nice is once this is in Enterprise Architect, you've got access, and you can see in my um, consulting practice, uh, just looking at some of these projects, I do a number of different things mind maps, I've got test models, uh, other blog posts and videos will cover some of those other models. But for a basic web service capability, uh, you know, very easy to create this, and because it's all graphical and and enabled with drag and drop. Uh, it's very easy to keep this type of thing in sync with a logical model, say something for Hibernate or a physical database model.